Let's start with CH alpha and its active ingredient Fortigale for joint health. This is the situation in a healthy joint cartilage. It is characterized by a balance of catabolism and anabolism. And this balance is stabilized by the extracellular matrix, abbreviated ECM. The chondrocytes produce, as seen before, collagen and proteoglycans, which build up cartilage mass. Chondrocytes are responsible for the synthesis and maintenance of the extracellular matrix. But the chondrocytes also produce proteases on the left side, which decrease the cartilage mass. As long as their activities on both sides of the weight, which is degradation and regeneration, if this weight is in balance, then we have a healthy joint cartilage. In summary, we can state that there is a lifelong turnover of cartilage. And now it's interesting what happens if this balance is disturbed. Then the cartilage tissue is degenerating. The balance drifts to catabolism, which means an overweight of proteases with the following decrease of cartilage mass. And the result of this process is osteoarthritis. As you know, disease starts years or even decades before the first symptoms occur. How is that regulated, we may ask ourselves. Also growing knowledge in recent years, the regulation of cartilage turnover is still more or less a black box. But what we know is that the chondrocyte is the key cell for a therapeutic intervention to stop the cartilage degradation. And how do we know this? We must return the weight to a balance of catabolism and anabolism by stimulating the biosynthesis of collagen and proteoglycans. What we also know in cases that this natural regulation fails, then the consequence will be osteoarthritis. Let's talk now about the clinical scientific substantiation. A large series of clinical data exists and they are all referring to a beneficial effect of Fortigale in patients which are affected by degenerative joint disease. And in fact, research has been carried out in that particular field during the last three decades on more than 2,500 volunteers, primarily on patients with slight to medium gonarthrosis. All in all, we have 14 studies. You can imagine a very heterogeneous study design. And in spite of this fact, we have common findings. All studies support the positive effect of Fortigale of joint health, a significant reduction of pain, an improvement of joint mobility, and a reduced need of analgesics. Let's take a look on a couple of studies in the last years. This study is called the Ripper study, made in 2005. Ripper carried out a prospective randomized placebo-controlled double-blind study in order to evaluate the effects of Fortigale on joint strength and work performance in individuals which were diagnosed with osteoarthritis of the knee. To verify the effects of Fortigale alongside subjective parameters such as pain and joint function, objective criteria were also included. 
And these objective criteria were isometrics and isokinetic measurements of leg power being defined as clinical endpoints. 250 individuals, which were all suffering from mild symptoms of osteoarthritis of the knee, were recruited. The subjects who were included in these trials were subdivided into two groups. One group receiving 10 grams of Fortigale, which is the active agent in CH-alpha, and another group obtaining a placebo. The duration of the study was 14 weeks. And in order to determine joint strength and work performance, a machine was used, you see on the left side down on the slide. It was a Biodex multi-joint system B2000. So the respective lower extremity that was affected by osteoarthritis was strapped on the device with a defined range of motion and speed. Isokinetic and isometric parameters were measured. And what was really impressing was that the untreated group was getting worse, but they did not feel it. And this machine, the Biodex machine, was able to detect this word development. And when Ripper compared the two groups at baseline, after eight weeks and after 14 weeks, the group having been treated with Fortigale, which is the orange color in this slide, showed significant improvement. Especially the average power, inflection, and tension was increased compared to the control group. And looking on peak talk and total work, the results were even more impressive. While the untreated group, which is the green, uh, the green, the gray, sorry, went under the baseline, the Fortigal group improved extremely. And both in extension and inflection. So this study was able for the first time to show on the basis of objective parameters that a statistically significant effect was achieved in the treatment of osteoarthritis with collagen peptides. Next study I want to draw your attention to is the named Penn State study made in 2008 on athletes. Why do we look at this study? because it is the first study on athletes without any injury or inflammation. There was no diagnosis of osteoarthritis in these people. Now we are leaving the patients with osteoarthritis and go to, in principle, healthy athletes who set their cartilage under stress while performing a lot of sports. At Penn State University, 147 athletes were recruited who had all complained of activity-related joint pain. And those athletes whose mean age was 20.1 years were subdivided into two groups. One group taking 10 grams of Fortigale and the control group taking a placebo for 24 weeks. These people suffered on joint discomfort among various joints, like hip, knee, shoulder, ankle, wrist, elbow, neck, and back. And the severity of symptoms was rated both by the, by the treating physician and by the study participants themselves with a visual analog scale. And it was interesting to see that in most parameters relating to the perception of pain, there was a statistically significant difference between treatment and control group. These measurements were an advantage for Fortigale over placebo. And even stronger results were shown for the subgroup of 63 patients who were suffering from knee atragia. As far as alternative therapies were concerned, like hydrotherapy, massage, and ice and heat packs, 
there was also a clear-cut difference between Fortigal and placebo. The treatment group needed less alternative therapies. So in summary, the results of this study confirmed that the consumption of Fortigal actually translated into a relief of symptoms and in an improvement of physical performance in healthy individuals. We now come to the most recent study with the most interesting findings. As I told you, clinical research has been working for more than 30 years on the effect of collagen hydrolysate of cartilage metabolism. And in patients with diagnosed osteoarthritis and athletes suffering from joint problems, the positive effect of special collagen peptides on the symptoms like pain and mobility, has been confirmed, as has the subsequent reduction in their need for analgesics. But however, to date, it has not been possible to deliver clinical proof of the actual influence of orally administered collagen peptides on structural changes in the joint cartilage, and hence on the mode of action of the substance. And this particular question was the subject of a study carried out at Harvard University in USA in cooperation with the Tufts Medical Center in Boston. The study carried out by McAlinden was a prospective randomized placebo-controlled double-blind pilot study on 30 patients suffering from mild gonarthritis. The goal of this study was to identify structural changes in the human joint cartilage by taking Fortigil, which is the active agent in CH-alpha. The study participants were given a daily dose of 10 grams Fortigil or a placebo over a period of 48 weeks. So to assess the cartilage quality, a special imaging technique, which is degemeric, was used. This allows the concentration of proteoglycans in cartilage tissue to be quantitatively measured with a high degree of accuracy. The data is transferred into colors, which means high density green color in the region of cartilage means a lower grade of osteoarthritis, which is a healthier situation, and low density means more red color in the region of cartilage, which is in the end a higher grade of osteoarthritis. And we look at the slide, the upper part is the placebo group. Here we have more red color, which means less proteoglycan content in the cartilage, which is in the end a higher grade of osteoarthritis. And these were different cuts of the same knee over the period of observation and we see that the cartilage was getting worse, taken placebo. The basic part is interesting. This is the Fortigale group. Here we have more green color, which means increased proteoglycan content in the cartilage, which is a lower grade of osteoarthritis, and in the end, a healthier cartilage. And we see that the cartilage was getting healthier over the time of observation, over the treatment period. And let me highlight to you, in spite of the pilot character of the study and the small number of patients, the results of this study clearly showed that the administration of Fortigale resulted in a positive effect on cartilage structure in the form of a tendential increase in proteoglycan density within the joint cartilage. While the untreated placebo group observed for more a year, progressive loss of cartilage substance occurred. The degeneration of the extracellular matrix in the virum group had statistically significant decrease after 24 weeks. So this is the missing link between our preclinical findings translated into the clinical findings. Now we know 
that Fortigale really has a benefit on cartilage. And another topic I want to highlight to you is a recent message from Mexico. Bioactive collagen peptides have been included in the Mexican guidelines for the treatment of osteoarthritis. So these peptides are classified as disease-modifying osteoarthritis drugs. And as a conclusion, we can state Clinical studies demonstrated that the oral administration of Fortigale has a beneficial effect on cartilage tissue. And common findings were pain reduction, increased mobility, and less need of analgesics. Consequently, the supplementation of CH-alpha, which is effective Fortigale peptides, can contribute to the maintenance of joint health and could help to preserve mobility and quality of life.